I've got a, a mystery object here. I'll get some close-up footage of it. It was given me by a friend. I'm not quite sure what it was for. It's got a series of holes in it on like a spiral. Uh, Mick's had a look at it and he thinks he might know. He's not sure. I was going to ask somebody. Uh, but before I give it to Mick, I thought I'd get some video. And if any of you knows what it's for, all you've got to do is drop us a line, email, be interesting to find out. Sony must have used one or made one or even knows where this one come from. It looks like it may have spun on there at one time but it's seized on solid now. Anyway, if you know what it is, please let us know, it's uh, most intriguing. There's a series of holes, but there's, there's an odd, odd hole that's missing. When you move around, you can see it's tapered, staggered. Also, in this week's nightcap, I go to visit a friend up at Castleside. Uh, a lot of Castleside I've been before. He has solar panels in a windmill. Uh, he runs his workshop like off grid off 24 volt DC and he shows us his carry layers running on 24 volt DC as well as his new windmill uh, interesting interesting look um, I'll put that in I hope you enjoy it Until it picks up properly. That's what's charging the battery out now, is it? Yes. That's a, so a 26 volts in it. That's right. You just watch it'll come up. The wind's dropped right down, hasn't it? Why do you, wouldn't it? It's a solid amp, like, isn't it? Yeah. That's the windmill you found. That's the three blade hub right you've got the uh, other part of the hub is there and you've got the three blades on it right it's upside down and the other generator between these two between the, that bit goes in the middle and this is the AC generator on here the alternator for the low wind and that's coupled that's not your connections goes through these right through the cable plants and all your, your diodes is in there so what, what that puts AC out yeah it's AC, but it's rectified. You see, before it comes, yeah, before it comes down. Do the 20, 24 volt DC. Twenty four yeah. volt DC. So what does that put out AC? This produces AC, and so it's rectified there first, right? And then that produces DC. So they're both in series, right? Yes. And then when, so what, when what, you change over, what uh, happens is that that one changes over. And this one runs on its own. This one runs at about 270 revs. Is, 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 that, is that the one for the low wind? High wind. High wind. And the other one's on high. Yeah. Right. That windmill that's up now is the opposite way around. Right. The alternator is on the high wind. So you've actually got an alternator on a dynamo up there? Yes. And this is the same. This is the dynamo right. in effect. And this is the alternator. So the alternator's for the low wind, the dynamo's for the high wind, yeah? Yes, on this one. The, the ah. one you, you did six months ago. Yeah. But the one up there, there were the six blades, is the other way around. The dynamo is on the low wind plus the alternator together. Right. And then the alternator is on its own when it's in high wind, but there's not enough amps there to change over. When it gets above five amps, the alternator works on its own. It changes over by itself, yeah. And if you'd been hearing it, you, I think you might have heard it running. Right. It would have revved up like hell. Where the tail goes on. Put it going there, like that. The tail's gone on the end. The tail is. Down there somewhere, I think. Right. But we've got bits everywhere. We've got a, a door closer that goes on, goes on there, and that thing also goes. This thing also goes on there. Is that like a damper for the tail of the door closer? Damp, a damper for the tail. Right. And what that goes on there, and yeah, that's make it rigid so that it doesn't fatigue. I might put another bracket on there as well. Right. This is upside down. The thing that's on the on the mast. 
is in the shed. This is upside down. This is the generator. This is the DC machine. Is that a? It's a Siemens DC motor. Right, like a like a stepper motor of a big machine. Oh well, it's it's not a stepper. It's it, it's one of them that they use on CNCs that can control the speed. Right, like a, like a drive motor. Yes, oh. a drive motor. Yes, it's and pretty powerful. It's about, it's somewhere around six kilowatts of power. And that'll put twenty-four volt out, yeah. It's forty-eight for kilo. Forty-eight. Yes. Well, this is twenty-four volts. This lot. Right. So I'll have to put that back in because this thing's all just getting everything ready. To do a mock up on that one, that's the original Siemens setup with 10 set of brushes. You know, the brushes pull against that spring, right? Oh, you can film that, yes. Yeah. That's the that's the standard Siemens, and this is the ones that I made for the from uh, stair lift motors that I had to make, you know, to cover the commutator properly, yeah, to cover the, the motor current. Oh, you say you've got the propeller on there, yeah. Quite a big motor, isn't it? It is, a, it's a heavy one. Yeah. It weighs just slightly over. Yeah, yeah. It's quite some quieter. Yeah. You can put it in the uh, self act. Right. So much luck we have with it. The second one. Good. It's all the way through. Try the heat again, it certainly worked on the last one. This one feels uh, rather tighter. We might need more heat than that propane torch can actually supply. Right. 
No, that's not going to go with that. Ooh. It's not going to play it. Right. Right, we've still got a little shell left in there. That's the stud starting to starting to collapse there. At least what's left of the stud. I've actually caught the cast down slightly on that side. I'll drill that out now and put a helicon into it. Right, we'll try new. That's better. Just blew the surface with the tail of the insert. Right, I've got some nice eight mil. Boards that I can use, shorten down, and they've got a nice tape of head on. I need to transfer these holes onto the piece of material I'm going to use for the the jaws. I've got a couple of glove screws here that'll screw in, and I've got a decent circle on the end, and they should make a good mark. On the new face jaw. This is a bit of steel we're going to use. Decent stuff it is as well. Well, basically, it's going to be going on there like that. It's down on the shoulder. Right, we have got two marks, which I'll be able to pick the centre up, I'll be able to eyeball them, pick the centre up and get it certainly accurate enough for what it's got to do. Right, I need to pick up the centre of that hole. Uh, a lot of people say that this method's guessing, I can assure you it's not guessing. Right, we've got the end of that pin is running dead true, right in the in the centre end of the machine. I bring the camera in closer so you can actually see possibly what I'm looking at. Right, that's not bad there. What we're looking to do is pick up the centre of that, so that we are doing a lane one axis up at a time. 
I usually wear two pair of glasses so I can see what I'm doing as well. You think I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm not like. And that looks pretty good. That'll be within probably less than a couple of thou being in the centre. It looks absolutely spot on. Put a centre drill into it. If I use a tape on the centre drill, you can see it's touching the circle all the way around, so it's absolutely spot on. This is what we're making a jaw for a vice, don't forget. Not an end cover for a nuclear reactor. Put an 8mm drill in and I'll have to turn it over and put the counter sinks in from the other side. As this is the side that goes up against the, the vice jaw, that's the side we're marked. Just to make sure I need discrepancy in the in the holes that they still line up. Should be a good fit for the 8mm bolts. Look at this. It's important that I put the countersink in here in the centre because it's going to be the countersink that actually locates the, the vice jaw. So, what I have got is a 8mm dowel pin, and that 8mm dowel pin goes in which means that that rule is absolutely spot on. Pulls the surface and stop putting. Right, that's one. The other one the same. Then we should be pretty good to go. Right, moment of truth. Obviously I've got a machine to top of that off, but that is nice it's touching all the way down there, there's no gap on any face so it should I 
put the dress up on the edges where they fail. I put the base together and machine that down so it's level with the other one. And for what I'm going to be doing with it, that would be perfectly acceptable. Normally you'd have a, like a cross hatch on there, but I'm pretty sure that will do the job for me. Once again, it's just time to say thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and as always, a massive thanks for all the well wishes that are coming in the wooden away from me, Dad. Thanks very much. And don't forget, if you like what you see, click the subscribe button. It does make a massive difference. Thanks for watching. Oh, John, you fell in, you.